it's time right now for our March predictions. And you're probably sitting at home saying, wait a second, Lars not even here and you're gonna do predictions? Well, guess what? We have these little things. We were able to reach him today. So here we go with an assist from a former World Series champion. Hi guys, Uncle Kevin here. I'm on a, uh, a one month hiatus of uh, golf extravaganza and I might lose my father of the year this year for the first time in seven years, but we'll see how that goes. This is for our March predictions. Question number one is? Deepest opening day no hitter will be pitched by? Jacob deGrom. That will be the first no hitter going opening day in a long time. I'm buying it. Uh, you know what, I can see it. One guy came to mind. Tyler Glass now. I thought he was the best starter in the sport. Mm. If he's healthy coming out of the spring training, DeGrom, Glass now, those are my two guys. Uh, for me, money talks, and I'm going with the brand new New York Yankee, Garrett Cole. Why not? 324 mil. I also always take a look at who he's pitching against on opening day. That would be the Baltimore Orioles, a team that the Yankees have owned over the last several years. Now, I know he's never made it through six innings without allowing a hit. But if he can give me four and a third, I'm still going to feel pretty good. So I'm going to go with Garrett Cole. You know, right you, you outsmart the competition. You looked ahead at the schedule. You know, Chris, <laughs> that's why you're always ahead of the game, my friend. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Actually, don't stop, man. Keep, keep it going. All right, let's see what's next. What player on a new team has the best opening weekend? Ooh, new player on a new team. You know, I'm a Dodger fan. Mookie Betts. Welcome to sunny California. You know what? I'm, I'm with 1-5 here. I think Mookie Betts is going to have a monster 2020. You know, some guys just don't look good when they get look right and they go into a new uni. Mookie Betts, for some reason, he looks good in that Dodgers uni. And it's, it, it's for me, it's just not a shock. I, I get it. I, I'm not a diehard Red Sox fan, so I'm sure they may look at it differently. But some guys just don't look right in a different uni. Mm -hmm. He looks good in that Dodger blue. I'm buying what Millard's selling. Yeah, I like that choice. I like it. Uh, I'm going to go with a guy who was also in the American League East a year ago but did not play on opening day because he was coming back from surgery, and that's Didi Gregorius. He has made the shift back to the National League. He has rejoined his old skipper, Joe Girardi. And the... First weekend, he's taken on the Miami Marlins. He's got great numbers over the years in March and April. So, Didi's going to go do his thing. He might even hit a homer or two. So, I feel good about his performance moving forward. There you go. All right, let's see what's next. Next, Josh Beckett. Bigger number opening weekend. Astros hit by pitches. Garrett Cole strikeouts. Rendon, Trout, and Otani home runs. Enough of the Astro stuff. We're going to turn the page because that's on the History Channel. I'm going to go with Garrett Cole. We'll have more strikeouts opening day than home runs and Trout and Otani and uh, Rendon, even though they will be going deep a lot. Trick question, and I'm going to agree with him because you helped me with that answer, with the, your first answer. Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles are going to struggle in 2020, and I think if you're Garrett Cole, you're Brian Cashman, you're the Yankee faithful, it looks like on paper you couldn't ask for a better matchup for his debut wearing the pinstripes. Now, with that said, I know you have to play the games, but if you're looking at it, Garrett Cole against a team that looks like they're going to struggle, I think I'm, I'm, I'm with 1-5. And I think – and I'm really certain that he's going to hang on and win this one. I do. Yeah, well, I'm, he's not going to win a point because at best he's going to tie because okay. I'm going with him on the, the whole Garrett Cole thing here. In his last 65 starts, he struck out at least seven batters 56 times. So that's in basically 86% of the right. time. He's getting at least seven strikeouts. We're not seeing seven bombs out of that triumvirate with the Angels. And the, I agree with him. Let, let, let's just – everybody take a deep breath with the Astros thing. It's not going to start on March 26th and all of a sudden they're going to get pellets at their head every time somebody steps in the batter's box. That's not how this thing's going to roll. I don't think it's going to end quietly, but it's not going to keep continuing at that rate. So there you go. All right, next. Name one player will lead a statistical category by April 1st. Example, Bellinger leads league in home runs. <laughs> He's so good there, that young man. Uh, that will be Eric Hosmer. The Haas will be leading home runs by April 1st. Welcome, Haas. 
You know, I, I like that, but I'm going to tell you a guy that I'm, I'm sneaky, I'm bullish on again. Chris Bryant of the Cubs. I think Bryant is going to get off hmm. to a good start. He had kind of a crazy offseason, not sure how that ruling was going to go. He had two years left of control by the Cubs. I think Chris Bryant is healthy. I think he's happy, and I think he's going to get off to a flying start for the Northsiders. By the way, kudos to Josh Beckett, who read the example that we sent him. Good job there, Beckett. That's good. Good work on your part. For me, I'm going to go with uh, Raphael Devers. Last year, he had a 71-point batting average increase. Ended up hitting 311 for the year. So I think he's actually going to lead the American League in hitting after like six games or whatever we will have played by April 1st. The guy can hit. He can also hit left-handed pitching. He's not like a 190 hitter against left-handed pitching, and he's going to be seeing Ryu probably on opening day or certainly in that first series. But they're going to take care of Toronto and Baltimore in the first few series of the year. So I think he's going to continue to mash. I like it. He's kind of really turned the corner and made himself an all-star ball player. All right, last March prediction. What is it? What player or coach alma mater will advance to the final four? Ooh, sick em Bears. Baylor Bears have been hot all year this year. And you know who went to Baylor? That's right, Max Muncy from your Dodgers. So there you have it. Predictions, winning. That's what we do here on the Golf Extravaganza. Rose and Plesak, I'll see you guys in May. <laughs> <laughs> There's none like him. You know what I'm buying? Big win for Baylor last night. Baylor's a good team. They ran into that one roadblock, Kansas. Ran into a good Kansas team about a week ago. Mm -hmm. I'm with them. Max Muncie, I'm buying Baylor. Give me Baylor. All right. The last time I paid attention to Dayton Flyer basketball, I think was 1984 when Roosevelt Chapman was lighting up the tournament and making the run all the way to the Western Regional Final where they lost to the eventual national champion Georgetown Hoyas with Patrick Ewing and Michael Graham and David Wingate and Reggie Williams and all those guys. The Dayton Flyers are a top five team, so Craig Stammen out at Padres camp is going, hey, let's go. Nobody's going to pick the Dayton Flyers to win it, and Stammen is actually a guy who's been really good the last three years. Last season, he was sensational. He's part of what, in my opinion, is the best bullpen in the National League, so Stammen, you've got a lot to be excited about, bro. Not only contending for perhaps a, a playoff spot in the National League, but he's going to fill out that bracket. He's going to go Dayton Flyers. Yeah. Another another good one, Chris. I'm giving you credit. Yeah.